Hello, this is Steve Olson from It's a CAD World. In this example, we're going to look at the ability of the ability to reuse geometry and components and assemblies that we've already built uh, using some iLogic using the place iLogic component. In this example, I'm reusing a rail that I've used in a previous example where I have a form where I can key in a particular size. and get my assembly to update based off some parameters. What we're going to do is we're going to reuse this in another assembly. I'm going to start a brand new assembly. I'm going to go ahead and save this. If I just use the normal place command it would place that assembly as is uh, with, with not, giving me any, not giving me any changes and reusing that. The place iLogic component command which is available as a flyout underneath the normal place command will uh, copy the assembly to a whole nother standalone assembly uh, giving me the ability to um, to reuse that geometry and reuse that intelligence without having to uh, constantly be changing my file. It will copy it for me. One of the things that the place iLogic component command will also enable me to do, it also enables me to link parameters in this assembly to parameters in the uh, iLogic assembly that I'm placing. So what I'm going to do in this example is, um, let's say I have, uh, I want to place four rails um, that are all going to be the same height and the same color. So in instead of specifying that rail and color height individually, I'm able to link those into parameters at uh, the, from this assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and create two parameters here. I'll call it rail height. Let's say we're going to create a rail that is, let's say, 56 inches tall. Add another new uh, this time add a text parameter we'll call it color and we'll say that it is red so I have those two parameters in this file when I go to my place iLogic component command it will let me pick a uh, an assembly that already has that iLogic in it so I'm going to go ahead and pick this rail that I am which is the rail that we uh, see you may have seen in a previous example So it's going to load that up into memory here. I'm going to get a couple different windows. So I get one window here kind of showing me here's the preview of that rail. Um, with, the, uh, with this dialog here, I'm able to specify uh, the parameters for this one here. The from assembly is where I'm able to link the parameters for this copy or this component um, to something in my assembly. So I'm going to do uh, two of each type here. So our rail length in this scenario here, let's make this um, 142. For our rail height, to the right of that, I'm going to pick the from assembly. You can see that it'll let me link that to the rail height value. You can see it's updating that uh, based off of that. The color, again, I'll link that to the color parameter here in this assembly. And then I can also pick my post. Let's maybe go with three. I go ahead and say okay, and then it will let me place that component. So I'm gonna place that one there, and I'll place one here. And I'll just say okay. Then I'll place the iLogic component again. I'll pick my rail again. This time, let's maybe go with a little bit more of a shorter rail. 
let's go with 48. We'll link our rail height. We'll link our color. And we'll set our intermediate post at zero like that. We'll be okay. So we'll go ahead and say okay to this. And I'll click to place two of these. Now one thing that you might be wondering is, okay, well, what's what's happening here with all these files? Let's just do look at our open dialog box here real quick. Here is that rail assembly that everything was based off that of. got a copy. Uh, if you ever worked with I assemblies or I parts, you know that by default it creates these different members that have a suffix of dash zero one dash zero two. That's essentially what it did here. It basically copied this assembly and placed copies of all the components uh, with the appropriate suffix. So um, th this is one drawback to the place I logic component command is that it um, I don't really have a whole lot of control of what the the, the members being called or uh, where it's saving the files. However, if um, you know, once I'm done here, I can close all the files, and then my pro if my project is structured appropriately, I should be able to click and drag and move these into appropriate subfolders. Or if I'm using Vault, I can do um, the same sort of thing, and potentially even do some renames to get the appropriate names and, and everything on it. Um, so that's the the out, That's that's kind of what the outcome is here. Also, I want to point out the fact that. Um, because we linked parameters in this assembly to the to the uh, sub-assemblies that were created, you'll notice that over here on my iLogic browser, I have two new rules. If I edit the one rule, you'll see that basically it's taking the rail height and the rail color parameters um, that that we've created in our assembly here, and setting components in those two sub-assemblies to that. Um, now the one thing that the, as I mentioned earlier about renaming some components and moving them around that would potentially um, break these rules so you'd have to be careful or conscious of that um, but uh, I wanted to point that out as well all right that's all for this session uh, thank you very much for watching this uh, video on uh, it's a CAD world I uh, thank you for watching and I uh, would ask that you continue to look for other iLogic videos uh, and other Autodesk uh, sessions on It's a CAD World. Thank you. Have a good day.